we are rapidly moving through this project and so we've now exported to the required file formats and we can start to wrap up the project by talking about the printing and so I'm going to go through the requirements of the printing and I'm going to show you how to print if you're on campus um, but if you're not on campus you're going to have to translate this for your printer keeping in mind that you cannot create postscript files um, on um, on a computer that hasn't been connected uh, or on a printer that is not a postscript printer and so if you try to follow the steps and you're using your desktop printer at home 99 times out of 100 your home printer cannot create postscript file um, postscript prints which is how color separations are created you can choose to create postscript files if you have that ability to but I want to I want to emphasize that's not the requirement for the project the project requirement is to physically print your artwork and I would like you to physically print your artwork um, if for some reason you can't let's say that you can print the color copies fine but then you're having issues with the color separations and you're at home and you just don't have time to come to campus to print then you can choose to create postscript files but you can only use them if you know how to create them if you're comfortable creating them and if the postscript files, the .ps files, uh, match the settings exactly that were required for the printing. And so the benefit of postscript files is that you're basically setting all the print settings for the file and you're saving it as a file. So whoever opens it and hits file print, all the print settings are already there. And so when I open your file, if your image is supposed to be printed as an imposed booklet, I should see an imposed booklet. And if your booklet is supposed to be centered on an 8.5 by 11 page, it should be centered on an 8.5 by 11 page. It shouldn't be falling off the page. It shouldn't be rotated the wrong way. If it's supposed to have printer's marks, it will have them. And for those of you who know how to create PostScript, this probably sounds, well, yes, that's how PostScript files work. If you are not comfortable with PostScript files, that is not something that we're learning right now, so you should do the physical printing route. Okay, so we're going to print a, um, a booklet. And so I'm going to go through the steps to print a booklet. Again, if you're not printing on campus, you'll have to translate this for your printer. But the settings are generally the same. And so the first step, we're going to close out of these windows. We don't need them anymore. The first step to creating a booklet is to have a document that has multiple pages. And if I zoom out here, you can see that the pages go back and forth. It is OK that the first page is on the right-hand side, because if you think about a book when it's closed, um, the cover's on the right-hand side, and then when you open it, page two is on the left and page three is on the right and page four is on the left and page five is on the right and so the very last page should be on the left hand side and so as long as you have multiples of four and you have what are called facing pages turned on when you create new documents in InDesign you have the option to have facing pages or not if I turn facing pages off oops let me actually turn it off on the document. If I go to the document setup and I turn facing pages off, you get what I like to call the Microsoft Word option. You get a column of pages, which is not right or wrong. If, if what I was trying to do required this, then I would have it. But if we go back and we put the facing pages on, this is what you want to see for a booklet. You need the pages to bounce back and forth and have a right and left hand side page. And so you need facing pages, you need multiples of four, you need the first page to start on the right, and you need the last page to start on the left. Once you have that, if you choose file print booklet, you're going to follow the following steps. One, under setup, you want to make sure you're printing all of the pages. And for our class, you're going to do two up saddle stitch, meaning that it's going to print two pages side by side. There are different options, but for right now, just go ahead and do two up saddle stitched. Your goal is that in the preview panel, you don't see any red. And right now, we're, we're good to go. We don't see any red. We haven't made any decisions about the print yet, but for right now, we don't see any red. If you see red at any point, you need to fix that red. And it will be glaring, and you'll see exactly what I mean in a few minutes when I show you how to create that. If we hit the print settings dialog box, that's basically like hitting file print. You get the same options. Some of the options will be grayed out because you chose them inside the print booklet dialog box, but others will not. Um, you need to choose a printer. And so I have the ability to create postscript files by printing. And so I could leave this as a postscript file and I could create those postscript files for the submission. I will show that in a different video. Um, but I'm going to physically print it. So I'm going to choose the right printer. And in, um, 
In the visual art and design department in all of the visual art and design computer labs, we have an HP Color LaserJet um, 6015 printer. And so it doesn't matter what all the stuff at the beginning says, it's talking about how it's set up and it's in, I'm in room 1-173 right now. Um, but you want to look for the one that says HP Color LaserJet 6015. That's the printer that these settings will work for. The Canon Pro is a photo printer, and so you don't want to print to that. And the Zante Plate Maker is actually for the Art1135 class where we make plates. And so now that I've chosen this printer, I should have all the options that I need. I'm going to print one copy. Under the Setup tab, I want to choose my paper. Never let the printer decide your paper. Tell it what size you want. We will only use US letter or tabloid. Based on the size of this finished booklet, it's 5 by 7. The flat size of one signature that has two pages side by side would be 10 inches across and 7 inches tall. And so we should be able to use the U.S. letter to print this booklet. I would like you to center the image on the page. Under marks and bleed, I would like you to include all printer's marks and I would like you to include document bleed settings because the printer's marks will tell us where to cut and to fold the project and I want you to include all of them um, so that you get used to seeing them. Under output, this is a color copy and so you'll choose to print a composite CMYK copy and you can click through the last four options but we're not really concerned with that. Now I don't have a preview in the bottom left hand corner like I told you that I would. That's because I'm printing a booklet. My preview is back in the print booklet dialog box. And so when I hit OK, I'll get a preview of what it's going to look like. And I can see that I have two pages side by side. There's printer's marks, but I have red. And red is bad because red will not print on the sheet. And so I can see that I am printing on a sheet that's vertical, 8.5 by 11. But I'm trying to print something that's 10 inches wide by 7 inches tall. And so if we go back to the print settings dialog box, you can go to the setup tab and you can try the different orientation options until it rotates and it puts it in the position that you want. And so I'm going to try, it's on the first one, so I'm going to try the second one and hit OK. And then it rotated, so now it's going to print on my page. Now if you click through this, you'll see that page 8 is printing next to page 1, page 2 next to page 7, page 6 next to page 3, and page 4 next to page 5. In order for us to be able to print these back to back, fold them in half, stick them together, collate them, we're going to nest them together, um, and have the book end up being in the right order, the pages have to be imposed, that's what it's called, imposed for printing, in this particular order. It figured out the order based on the booklet type that you chose. If you cho chose perfect binding and you hit preview, it's going to have different page numbers, right? So page four is now next to page one. So you want to make sure that you choose saddle stitching because you're going to saddle stitch these. You're going to put staples on the spine. The last thing we need to do is we need to make sure that it's going to print on two sides. And right now we have not made that decision. So we need to go back into the print settings dialog box and hit the printer option. And then you may get a prompt if you're on a, a school computer that says, are you sure you want to go into this print dialog box? We really don't want you to change anything in there. Ignore that prompt. And then you probably, how do I, I don't even know, there we go. You probably have a small dialog box like this that says you can print on two sides. And yeah, you can click that and you can keep your fingers crossed and you can hope that it works. But the better option is to show details. And under two-sided binding down here, you have the option for short edge or long edge binding. Now, if I was talking about this booklet, I would say that this booklet has long edge binding because the booklet is going to fold along the seven inch side and the finished book is going to be five inches across and seven inches tall and so the longer side of the booklet is being bound. However, this is a printer and the printer doesn't know how you're going to bind the book. What the printer is asking is what direction do you want me to flip the paper when I'm printing the next side? And if I was to flip it on the long side, the 11 inch side of the paper, I would end up with 8 and 1 printed and then I would flip it over along the 11 inch side. Now I would print another image and it would end up being upside down. And so what you want to do is you want to flip the paper along the short side up here and so the pages will all face the same direction. And so we'll choose short edge binding. Then you can hit print and you can select OK and then you could hit print here. And you'll get two sheets of paper that come out of the of the printing press or the printer you're using. The first one will have page 8 next to page 1 and on the back of that will be pages 2 next to page 7. 
The second sheet will have page six next to page three, and it'll be backed up with four and five. You're going to, I'm going to hit cancel here, and I'm going to go open that PDF that we created. After it's printed, you're going to use the printer's marks to figure out where to fold it. And so you're going to fold it along the hash mark that is in the middle of your registration mark at the top and bottom of your page. That indicates the middle of the booklet. And if you fold it there and you line it up, it should line up perfectly. You can also fold it in half, bring like the right hand side of the page over to the left hand side page on a light table. And with the light table, you can line up the, the trim marks or the crop marks as they call them in InDesign and the bleed marks. And if you do that and then you fold it, the crease will be right down the middle. After you have folded your two signatures, so fold them independently, I would like you to stick them together so that the pages are in the order that they would go. So you're going to do what's called nesting. You're going to, you're going to sit them right on top of each other, kind of like, um, it's called saddle stitching. Picture a horse with a saddle, right? The saddle goes over the horse and then your legs go over the saddle. When you stick um, the signatures one on top of each other like these on top of these, it's called nesting the signatures. And so all you're concerned about is after you fold it, make sure that the page numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are in order. And in order for that to work, you will have to nest them. The last two things that I would like you to do is I would like you to take a stapler, just a regular stapler, and I would like you to put two staples in the spine that go through the both signatures, both both of the sheets of paper. And it's a little uncomfortable and weird, and you don't have to make it perfect. If you come to campus, we have like a, a cheap little saddle stitcher that you can use, um, but you really just can use a regular stapler. I made the page size small, so that you should be able to kind of stick the stapler all the way along it. Um, you have to saddle stitch with at least two staples because when you staple with one, the signatures can kind of wobble and move back and forth. And so you always put two staples in for stability. And you, in general, you space those staples out at least three or four inches apart. And so don't put them right next to each other. Then and only then you can fold your booklet and you have a finished booklet, but you still have all these printer's marks on the outside. And so after you have folded your signatures, assembled them and stapled the spine, you can then use a straight edge and an X-Acto knife and you can trim your pot project. And you're gonna use these inside trim marks, not the outside ones, the inside ones. You're gonna use those and you're gonna trim your project on three sides. And so you're not gonna trim it on the spine, but you'll trim it on the top the face or the outside of the book and the bottom. And when you do that, you'll have a finished book that is trimmed to size and it doesn't have any printer's marks on the outside. When you are ready to submit your prints, you can drop off physical prints on campus if you want to, if I'm your teacher, but you don't have to. You can photograph your prints. And so in the InDesign class, we're not looking for the quality of the print. So let's say your printer at home doesn't do a great job with the image. I don't really care what the image looks like. I want to know that you can choose the right settings. And so you can take a snapshot of your booklet, maybe from two or three angles, so I can see that it's nested, I can see how it's trimmed, and I can see that there's staples in it. And the same goes for your color separations, which we'll talk about in the next video. You can just take a snapshot so I can see that they're all done. You don't have to worry about scanning them if you don't have a scanner, and you don't have to like mail them to campus or anything like that. Just make sure that I can see all the requirements of the printing. I can see that, you know, that it's a booklet, I can see that it's stapled, I can see the quality of how you trimmed the edges of the sheet.